On the morning of November 6th, 2024, despite being a person who otherwise listens to plenty of music, I played one track, one time. One of Tricks Point Never's Memory Vague. I don't like jumping onto sensationalism bandwagons, so I'll make this quick, impart some words of warning and wisdom, and then get back to working on my next video. As I've said before, the only thing worse than fascism is dead plants and fascism. Harsh times aren't an excuse to declare all efforts as meaningless and to pick up unhealthy coping habits. The drinking, smoking, or other self-harm you're doing is only going to make pushing through these upcoming struggles harder. If you haven't made self-improvement goals, big or small, now's a good time to start. If you're a shoulder people tend to find themselves comfortable crying on, it'd be wise to do community damage control if you have the spoons for it. Our communities and our country are going to ask a lot from us, and we need to take care of ourselves in the meantime. If you're waiting for some saving grace, a recount in Pennsylvania, the Trump trial to invalidate his win, evidence of election tampering, you need to stop and come join the rest of us in reality. This is not going away, and as much as you wish the bad people would trip on some kind of snag, you've been depending on those snags to be there for too long. If you're bitter and the conclusion you've come to is that half of America doesn't care about my rights and will throw me under the bus over inflation, you don't understand that elections and opinions are two entirely different things. If you're angry at the third party shills or your neighbor with a Trump flag, you're wasting minutes on people who don't care about your opinion that would be better spent taking care of those around you who are still experiencing shock from these results. So everyone take a deep breath and let me lay this out how I see it. This problem wasn't going to go away on its own and relying on an opponent's failure for the source of your success is a losing strategy. This was an inevitability. We are currently living in the end times of liberalism. What does this mean? Globally, the far right is scoring victories while liberal politicians flounder, but this is less about people becoming further right and more about a world that's lost all faith in liberalism. Liberalism is incrementalism. It trusts that our systems are infallible, and that if we blindly trust them, we will eventually end up at the best conclusions. It trusts that everyone is acting in good faith, no matter how much you disagree with them, and that meeting everyone somewhere in the middle is the key to giving everybody what they want. This is all complete bullshit that most people don't believe anymore. Anyone further left than a liberal doesn't believe that the far right operates in good faith, nor do they think our systems are infallible since they suffer from many, many systemic issues which liberals and their incrementalism are unequipped to solve. And while the majority of Americans are not politically active enough to have these concerns, most of them went through extreme traumas that shook their faith in the very systems that liberals put on a pedestal. Do you think Democrat politicians, making six figures in office before you count for bribes, who own two or more houses, were affected by the 2008 financial crisis? No. Do you think Democrat politicians, when the system didn't choose the candidate with the most votes in 2016, felt cheated out of what they were led to believe is a fair, democratic system? No. Do you think Democrat politicians who get complete health care coverage for the entire time they're in office were personally affected by the pandemic? No. Do you think Democrat politicians who are largely of majority demographics have any urgency to protect the rights of minorities past simply pretending they're concerned? No. Do you think Democrat politicians who regularly get donations from billionaires who don't even know what the cost of a loaf of bread is were ever worried about inflation? No. Everyday people saw the government bail out corporations and fail to arrest a single banker in 2008. They witnessed a system that called itself a democracy pick the candidate with the second most votes in 2016. They watched as their relatives and friends died at the hands of a largely preventable public health crisis. They saw their daughters threaten suicide if they got pregnant, and their wives die of childbirth complications due to abortion bans. They watched as everything skyrocketed in cost, while their paychecks stayed stagnant. Now, to be clear. Dems handled the pandemic better than Trump did. They passed the Inflation Reduction Act. They started making safe havens for trans people and protected abortion at a per-state level. Their chambers of Congress are being made up of more and more diverse people with every election. It would be lying by omission to not mention these victories. But in a larger context, this is damage control for problems they let happen due to their complacency. They never codified abortion because they underestimated how low their opponents would stoop, nor took the rights of minorities seriously until they were actively under attack and took too long to be pro-union to counteract a party that's known for using tax cuts as a way to pretend they put more money in working people's pockets. They wanted it to be your job to take Trump seriously at the ballot box, and not theirs to do something about it. Just as a billionaire wants it to be your fault for not recycling, when it's theirs for filling our oceans with microplastics and our air with pollutants. Just because liberals suffer a plethora of ineptitudes doesn't mean that both parties are equally bad. It just means that, as Germany already knows too well, Liberals are never capable of ever defeating fascism. 
These results are also not an indictment of democracy as a whole. Coming to the correct conclusion is only its secondary function. The first is consent. Much of America didn't consent to this at all, either because they did not have the luxury of expressing that consent by turning their beliefs into a vote, which is why I say earlier that outcomes and opinions are two different things, but also that the increasing lack of faith in politics as a solution in general makes it hard for anyone to want to go through all of the extra difficulties with each passing election to cast that vote. And for those who did have the luxury of casting a convenient ballot but decided not to, remember that if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Many of the people who voted against this country's best interests did so because they erroneously believed that Kamala cared more about social issues than the economy, and that the president can somehow magically lower prices to combat inflation despite that not being how economics works. The economy in recent years took a working class that was largely living paycheck to paycheck and turned them into single-issue voters. They're in survival mode, and feel strongly that they literally and figuratively cannot afford to support human rights and the environment. To a lot of these voters, they were choosing between civil rights or economic survival. It doesn't matter that this wasn't the reality of the situation, because people are not strictly rational beings, and effective politicians know that playing off of vibes is immensely more important than talking about policy. I can't blame Kamala for thinking voters cared about policy, but as we already know with Obama, charisma will drag you to the finish line no matter how lukewarm your proposals are. That said, your fellow Americans aren't dumb. Most of them don't have the time to be politically inclined outside of their soul-crushing jobs, and like they have for most of their lives, acted on simple gut instinct. They didn't fall for simple tricks. Many were targeted by billions of dollars worth of propaganda accelerated by the most advanced technology of the modern day. They aren't unempathetic. Plenty of them are breadwinners who cannot risk their well-being on praxis or their mental energy on pointless arguments. They're not violent. Lots of them are otherwise decent people with bad politics, despite the media putting a massive spotlight on their violent counterparts because sensationalism gets attention. This all isn't to say that the next four years won't be rough, or that fascists and their apologists are benign. Lessons will be learned. Hardships will be had. The main thing we must do now is take care of ourselves and our communities. Additionally, be inconvenient for fascists. If they want you gone, make them work for it instead of bowing to them. If the lumberjacks are already there, be the person who chains themselves to the tree for no other reason than to tell them to go fuck themselves because they have to waste time to get the chain cutters. Remind them that evil is never a convenient endeavor. Just because liberalism died doesn't mean that fascism won. In the meantime, you're unfortunately stuck in this shitstorm with the rest of us, but the communities you fight alongside will absolutely find a way to make it worth your while. Don't you worry.